good afternoon. This is Nina Dilbeck, the coordinator of the Home Economics Career and Technology Professional Development Project at Fresno State. Welcome to the Interior Design Presentation Board webinar. Our webinar is coming to you live via CSU Fresno webpage. Our thanks goes to Eric West, Information Technology Consultant from the Technology Innovations for Teaching and Learning at Fresno State. He is our camera tech and will be recording the program so that it will be available on our website soon. And I will send you that link as soon as we have it available. All of, all parts of this webinar and sometimes just parts of it are going to be valuable not only to you but also to your students. If you have questions during the webinar, you can email me at ninad at csufresno.edu or you can call me at 559-349-5826. And if you didn't get all that, if you'll call my office, Pam can give it to you. Uh, your presenter today is Patricia Hennings, Interior Design Professor Emeritus of Fresno State and former chair of the Art and Design Department. Uh, she also originated the Interior Design major and master's degree uh, at Fresno State. She is a member of the American Association of Interior Designers and the Interior Designer Education Council both of which uh, she is a professional member of. She is an award-winning designer, having designed over 120 medical facilities and personal homes. She has judged design competitions at the National Interior Design Organization at the state and national level, and also for our FHA Hero CRE competitions at the region and state level. Her presentation today will be emphasizing what she has seen at these competitions, what has worked well and what doesn't work well. She is also a former home economics secondary teacher and also worked for Southern California Edison. And Pat, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Happy to do this. Well, good afternoon and happy Valentine's Day. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm eager to give you some hints in terms of um, some things that can be kind of perils along the pathway in this design competition. If you have your scenario or if you do not have it, I would encourage you to make some notes and then refer to it. I've numbered the pages on the scenario. They are not numbered as you receive them. But as I go through, it will help you be able to see um, where there are special areas of, a, of a importance. This is an interesting design competition, but I need to tell you honestly, it is a very challenging design competition, um, particularly for people with no formal training in interior design. So I went through it many times and tried to make very, very sure that I highlighted some of the things that they might miss. First of all, the client in this project, Jillian, is an art major. She has also studied in Italy for art history, and she's a potter. Now, in keeping that together, I want to tell you that um, in looking this through, you need to recognize that those will drive the design competition. Um, you will need to have your students show art in the room and on the elevations. This design competition is more spatially oriented rather than decoratively oriented the way um, that the previous ones have been. Um, in the project, as you are looking at it on page one, it talks about brick and wide plank floors. Those colors will drive the competition to some extent. Uh, brick is considered a neutral when you're working in the art community, um, but you'll want to be sure that your students are working with colored pencils in the raw sienna, um, that they are working um, with things that can definitely pick up those colors with the terracotta. terracotta. Um, this is a restoration project and it is 100 years old. There are some key things that they would need to be sure of. 
The unique thing in this competition is that the space has 16 foot ceilings. That's very high. And they need good lighting, which means that the lighting is going to have to drop down. The other thing that's pointed out in the program that they could miss is that there is molding probably eight inches minimum in height at the top of the room and four inch molding at the base. Um, when you are looking at the space, remember that they are going to keep the art studio, they're restoring it for an art gallery and to service other artisans. Very often when pottery is done as a studio, it will combine with glass. So they might keep that in mind. Also, the second floor being a combination of art studio and apartments lends some specific challenges. Uh, if you are on the second page, I want to point out some interesting issues about this. Um, there are th thick exterior walls, and if you will look, if you'll look at this plan, you will see the difference in looking at walls that are exterior walls here, brick. They are probably going to be 9 to 12 inches thick but notice that the interior partition walls will be shown on your plan as six inches. Your students are drawing their plans to quarter inch scale and they'll be tied to graft paper probably when they begin. This tends to be how, um, how they'll be lining it up. But as they move away from the graph paper, they have to recognize that they've got to pay real close attention to the dimensions. I want to talk about some of the existing architectural elements. And if you will switch to page, what would be page five, it will be, I, I'm going to show it on your screen and point out some particular issues that you'll need to address in space planning. Now the plan as you're seeing the plan is um, drawn horizontally, but you were presented it in a vertical fashion. You need to note a couple of things. First of all, the plan indicates that it's drawn at 1 8 inch equals a foot. So when they are taking the dimensions, they have to transfer that to 1 fourth inch equals a foot. They also have to be sure they include a north arrow. And I saw that as a problem over and over and over. If they do not include a north arrow, the plan will not be readable to the judges. As you are looking at that, there are some particular challenges on this plan that I, I want you to see. And I'm going to point them out on my plan if you can look at them. In the upper corner to the left where you see the elevator, that is the symbol for the elevator to be shown. And there is a vestibule there that is an entrance. Now remember that this is an artist she is going to be selling and it is going to be a working studio. So she will be, bring people from the gallery downstairs up into that studio. So this vestibule is a natural place for furniture. Also, if you'll notice on the lower part, um, you'll see a projection um, that simply looks like almost like a Greek key design. Those are two natural spots to put display. If she is going to bring people up and needs to sell this art, because this is a 27-year-old needing to pay for restoring a 100-year-old building, so she's going to have to sell. Um, those two spots there that recess are natural spots that she could put, um, that she would be able to put storage and display. There are a couple of other things that will drive your student's space planning. If you look on the back wall where it shows the kitchen and the kitchen sink, there are two places that it indicates plumbing wall. Now in a hundred year old building, you are not going to be moving the plumbing all around. 
but you are required to create a bedroom with an adjacent bath. So generally, you don't want to move that plumbing more than about 12 feet. So pay attention to that plumbing wall and be sure that you access it both for water and for drain. Because when we get to the pottery studio, I'll talk about the need for water. If you look at the upper right um, corner, you will see that the wall um, where there is a blue line that the wall runs into the exterior wall. That is an incorrect drawing, and I want to point that out to you. They should not connect that way. You simply leave out that cross line, and it should be open, just as you see it's open on the right-hand side by the exit. So don't have your students replicate that area. Now, in your problem, it also says for this artist that she is creating a seating and dining area on this patio outside in the floor, uh, in the rooftop terrace. As you are looking at the drawing and you come down, you have structural columns in the room. There are six of them, and they cannot be moved. But because she's going to put a bedroom in this space, she has to have a means of exit. And to not violate fire codes, she'll have the elevator, but it cannot be the only means of egress from the room. So the position of that, terror, that um, fire escape is extremely important, and they don't want to block it with furniture. Um, the other thing that you could look at um, as they are looking around the room, be sure that you note that a bedroom has to have a window. That is, again, a national law. And so as you're thinking about the placement, there needs to be a window in the room where there is glass and a means of escape. OK, I'm going to go past this plan. Um, but just do not lose sight of the fact that your students want to be sure that the exterior walls are 9 to 12 inches, the interior walls are 6 inches, and where they run into another wall, they don't cross one another. And I think that will help them considerably. Okay, let's look at some of the existing architectural elements on page 2. It tells you about exter thick exterior walls, and it tells you about the elevator. Then it talks about, in the second paragraph, about the architectural elements. So you will want to have your students really sell their plan primarily with their elevation. And if you will look at this plan, as you are seeing going around in here, elevations, as you know, are two-dimensional. Your students don't always get that. There were several students last year that showed their elevations as three-dimensional. The way that they distinguish what is in the foreground and what is in the background is by variation in line weight. And so if, they buy, if they're drawing it with ink, if they simply buy different widths of pin points, then they'll be able to show it. But notice this shows the brick which will be important, and you will have brick all the way through your space unless they choose to plaster over it, but that's not called out in the plan. Also, it shows here that they have the baseboard and that they have the crown molding. Now, yours will be more detailed for your students. They can refer to any architectural design book um, as far as these elevations, but be sure that the elevation is complete. Now, one of the things that will happen in the elevations for these students is that they're going to want to show spaces that show art. Remember, that's the key point they made at the beginning. The, the owner is an artist, she's a potter, and she studied art history. So what does that tell you? She probably has some prints from Italy. She may have some busts that would need to be shown. She'll have a variety of kinds of pottery. Um, again, 
stress that the seat at the ceiling is 16 feet. When I read mine, it had a little light spot there, and I didn't pick that up at the first time. Um, the kitchen, um, when you are working with that, my recommendation is to send your students to Sears. They have the biggest selection of all the basic appliances. Your instructions tell you to go to um, National Kitchen and Bath. But in reality, what you're going to want to do is simply ch decide on the kinds of appliances that they're going to have. One hint, because this is a 100-year-old building, do not do a downdraft because they don't have a way to vent it. So it's going to have to vent through the ceiling, and you'll have to add a hood, which your plan doesn't show. Um, as far as the scope of the plan, if you are looking at a functional multi-purpose space, the key word is minimalist. Um, if they are going to do this in a minimalistic fashion and yet tie it in with old architectural elements, they want to pay some attention to that fire escape that has straight black metal lines and it has some crisscross lines. Those could be picked up by using old doors for reusing furniture. Um, they could be used as crisscross supports, almost like a sawhorse for tables. The, do the doors can have over the top a laminate that can be placed. And one of the things that they might consider is um, a chemical resistant core. Um, it says that um, the space as it is going through needs to be defined. They need seating for four to six people and an office space. Now on your plan, she may decide to use that space that is um, on the floor plan uh, directly across from the elevator vestibule. That may be her office or you may decide um, to use that in a different fashion. But remember to consider that water source. For the patio, um, previously um, it can be some of the brick. It says be sustainable. So my recommendation is they stick with the wide plank floors. They will have to do a special ceiling in the pottery area um, because it won't take the water. But they could seal and sand and seal the wood plank they can get any picture of wide wood plank and that would work out just fine. And also, I would suggest that in showing the brick on the board, there is a product called Z-Brick. It's a very small product. Um, it looks just like a brick, but it's very thin. And so they'd be able to place that on the board, which I will show you. I would also suggest that they say to use some reusable um, materials I would suggest that they use some of the brick that's been torn down. The building has been gutted. Uh, there will be brick around, and they could build some benches there. But again, be sure they do not block the entrance to the fire escape. That is a main exit for egress if there would be a fire. OK, the other challenge that they're going to have on this problem is to really understand the pottery. So I'm going to show you some of the equipment, but first I'm going to show you, let me just show you some of the kinds of things you need to think about. For the pottery, because she is an artist selling her work, it will not just be thrown pots in terracotta color like one could buy at a big box store. Um, some of the pottery will be painted and will require special paints and glazes, which we'll take a look at. But this is a particularly nice piece from Foxwood Galleries. And notice that this pottery is stamped, it is carved, and it has incisions that are made um, around it. And then all of the glazes are put over the top. Now, your, plan, your instructions tell you in this project that the artist will be using the kiln on the first floor, but she will be using the glazes on the second floor where she lives. So let's take a look at some of the things that she's going to need for that pottery studio. 
First of all, you'll see in your plan that she needs to have the potter's wheel. And the potter's wheel comes in a variety of sizes. This is an electric one. And if you are dealing with it, um, you will find that for that, um, the dimensions of this one are about 31 inches from the center and 28 inches wide. You can use any surface. Um, she could reuse some old doors, but again, an inexpensive material would be um, to use um, uh, the chemical resistant laminate, like they use in hospitals in the labs so that they're not damaged by the samples or by um, any of the other um, materials that are tested. Next, you'll see that we have to provide space for the clay, and this is the way that the clay is purchased. It looks like loaves of bread. Um, it has to be kept sealed, and then as one is working with that, it will need um, to have water added to it as you move on. Next, um, this kind of storage, metal storage with the racks, notice that the racks come, they are open at the bottom. Generally, they are a wire mesh. Um, this is where she'll store wet clay, but she'll also store what is called greenware. It's the pottery after it's been made, but before it's been glazed. Next, they'll need um, to provide storage for the glazes. Now, she is not a huge production line, but she will have some basic colors. And I suggest that your, um, your students go online, look at pottery shops, um, look up what some of the basic glazes are. But you will see that um, the aqua color, the sienna color, some of the deep reds and deep blues are fairly common. Next, um, you will have to provide storage for a rack. Um, she will be wheeling that, those pots down the elevator to the first floor to be glazed. So it's very important that the transition between the vestibule and the floor be smooth because this pottery is still wet and it could lose its shape. And also that the door be sufficiently wide. Thank you. All right, um, I do want to emphasize to you that your plan calls out that you cannot change the doors and the windows, and they have four inch architectural molding around those. But when I check the plan at eighth inch scale, the doors are quite adequate as far as moving. Um, in looking at the um, elevation you will probably see that your students will want to have those colored. And I want to point out to you that they want to get some decent um, pencils. If you are going to buy the pencils, the colored pencils that I use are um, praying. Um, don't use the Crayola colored pencils. Those colors tend to be far uh, too pastel and would not be colors that you would be using in the art gallery. Uh, as I've indicated on page four, there is an architectural detail that you have on your plan. Um, but again, I want you, I, I don't know that we can see this, but I will show you on your plan. If you are looking at this, they have made quite an issue out of this fire escape. And I'm sure that the reason is because the architectural elements are vertical lines, and then you'll see the diagonal supports. Okay, so that basically covers um, the materials that are on that sheet. Let's talk a little bit about um, the boards. First of all, when they are doing their drawing, Please encourage your students not to draw in pencil. The judges absolutely cannot see it, but they should first draw in pencil. Also, be absolutely sure that your students are working with a triangle. This triangle is, is essential. Well, let's see how I can make you see it. Um, they need to have a 90 degree triangle and be sure that everything is straight up and down. Also, 
as they are mounting their samples, I always use a level. A lot of people don't, but when I am going through, I am making absolutely sure that I am going to be sure that these are all lined up just exactly alike. If your students are going to be working with templates, the basic templates that they're going to need are going to be um, the residential ones, and remember it is a queen size bed. When they get the dimensions for a queen size bed, be sure that that includes only the mattress. So they have to allow for the support, and they need to allow um, for uh, the headboard and footboard. Another good template to have is one that will have the circles. Don't have them freehand circles. Where can you purchase these templates? Um, these templates are available from Allard's. Um, kitchen and Bath um, in, uh, Association has the kitchen and bath templates. But every place, if you look under architectural supplies in the yellow pages, everywhere has them. So um, they are readily available. Also, um, if, if some of you do not have them, I have many that I'm not using now. <laughs> Hundreds, I think. Okay, the other thing besides a level is I want your students, when they go to Sears or wherever you're going to send them to see appliances, they, um, they um, be sure that they work with a metal tape measure and not a cloth tape measure. Um, be sure that they take a camera with them at all times. They've got to photograph things and they need to always indicate their dimensions by indicating the width first. That is imperative on their window treatments. Always width, then height. Um, another thing that they will want to have in, in their possession is um, double face tape, the transfer tape and also a box knife or an X-Acto knife. Um, and I recommend for the pins that they use a Pilot fine tip pin. They work out extremely well and can go from there. Watch your students if they're doing the cutting in your classroom. The first year I taught at Fresno State, one of my students cut off the tip of her finger, so I've never forgotten it. Exacto knives are dangerous, and you'll have to alert the school that you're bringing them in because they really could be a weapon, so they need to know that. Um, when they are cutting, and you will find that it's possible to do some real interesting things with cutting. So let's talk about this a little bit on the boards. They may want to cut recesses into the boards for the materials, and if they do, they need to use a metal straight edge. Do not cut against your architectural scale, or you will make nicks in it, and then you can't draw a straight line. Also, don't ink against your architectural scale. So have an architectural scale and a metal straight edge. So this is one way to cut your samples by cutting recesses. Another way that they can do their samples is by simply doing the pictures on the board. This is one where they've actually scanned them and printed them on the board. Another way to handle it is to mount your samples directly on the board and then um, to be sure that every sample is labeled. That was the most consistent mistake that the students made. They did not label their samples and they have to be lab labeled. So if you are looking here at the north wall elevation and the dining chairs and the bar chairs, you have the materials that are going to be shown. Now, your boards are going to be crowded because they have to use a 24 by 36. And if they violate that, the size of the board, when I have done national and design um, and state design competitions, if the board is the wrong size, they are disqualified before we even judge it. So your, your requirements are not that stringent, but get your students in the habit of saying, this is what it says, this is what I'm going to do. 
Now, it encourages you to have a border. And do you see what the person has done here is they have simply drawn a straight line. They have a border that shows up all the way around. Now, it's not marked. It can be done with tape. It can be done with a strong line, but you need to have a consistent edge. On this one, the student got a little carried away, in my mind. Um, the border is here, but it's not consistent on this side. And then she has multiple lines which are decorative at the bottom, but I think it becomes a little bit too confusing when there's not something consistent that you, you can see. What about the blackboard? Um, that's where I'm going next. <laughs> okay, this is a board. You have an option on your requirements that you can either use black or white. Um, I'm sure that they will allow you to use this off-white because when you buy the matte board, it's this color on one side and pure white on the other side. And because you have um, so much brick and you probably have either oak, cherry, or hickory floors, then they have a little bit more yellow base to the color. Now, as the students are going through here and they're doing their presentation, you are pointed out consistently to refer to the art elements and the design principles. The art elements and the design principles are the same for architecture, interior design, fashion design, graphic design. So anywhere that you're using them, they are consistent. But when you are talking about the focal point, you have to think, what is this project all about? And this project is about art. So because you're going to choose an elevation that is going to have a focal point that has art in it, you're going to be showing some shelves with pots and circles and busts. This is one that I think is nicely done. Actually, this is one that won a design competition. You will not be doing, your students will not be doing axonometrics or, or perspectives. However, she has chosen to use a black mat board and then she has taken foam core and simply bounced it out just a little bit so that the floor plan comes forward. Um, you can see the variation in the widths of the walls and then she has consistently mounted all of her samples here. Now, the disadvantage is that you have so many things that have to fit on this board. So my suggestion is you emphasize the brick, you emphasize the floor, and then if you are going to pick your paint color, have it be an adequate size. Um, Notice here, she's got the pieces called out and then she has them named and has the pieces directly where they are. So she's chosen to use her furniture with the fabric, furniture with the fabric, furniture with the fabric, and then this is the case goods. Now, she's gonna see a lot of the case goods. On this project, when you are looking at it, um, this fabric goes all the way around. It's going to go all the way through a restaurant. So because there's so much of it, she has big samples for here and big samples for the window coverings. The other place that students run into a little bit of difficulty is they go get these teeny tiny paint chips. Don't do that. Every paint store has big paint chips go to Home Depot, go to any of the paint manufacturers, but get a paint sample that is large enough. In this instance, because this is a restaurant, the brick goes all the way around, and so that is indicating it. Yours will be very similar to this. You'll have a brick, you'll have a wide planked floor. Then as far as the color palettes, decide what they're going to do. This is gonna be an accent paint. 
But notice that that paint then is replicated here. Let me lift this up a little, oh, you can see. The paint is replicated so you can see where the paints are used in the elevation. Have your students choose their elevations carefully. Are the paint chips on this board large enough? This one is. That one this is? This one is. This is simply showing that this is a color palette. Um, and, and so on that, it isn't. But this one is large enough. Um, the brick sample, if you get a Z brick, it's actually the size of a brick. So it's a good thing. And that and the plank would be where I would go. Then I would be looking at things like this. This is a piece of minimalist furniture. This is kind of accessory that she might have from something that she brought back from Italy. But notice you could have the basic leg or she could have a cross leg. Um, but think about it. It says to use new and reused furniture. It does not say she can use a gift. So that's, that's important. Lastly, I want to just emphasize to you that when the students have done their budgets, you have conflicting information in what you are given. At one spot, it says do not include the cost of labor. At another spot, it says installed price. So you have to make a decision, um, and, and maybe Nina can do that or check with the state, but they need to be consistent about that. The reason it's an issue for you is that your students, when they get the flooring costs, if they were doing carpeting, it will generally be quoted installed price. Um, for your window treatments, it won't be unless you're getting like a package deal. My recommendation for window treatments is to keep it very, very simple. Look at Mecco shades. They roll up. The reason I say that is that these windows are tall and they are single pane glass and it says they're not going to change them. It doesn't say what city this is in, but my guess is this is written like an East Coast design competition. So um, they will at least block, block the air. The other thing is a possibility to use a very neutral material with texture and do it in a pleated Roman that's very simple. Um, if you look at your star events sheet that is given, it says FCCLA. I just want to give you a few hints on that. Um, have your students lay out their board first. Um, they can get flimsy, but they can also get uh, the flimsy in bigger sizes and get it so it's all placed before they start marking anything on the plan. Um, then they'll see what happens. What, what I saw in the past competitions is that the students didn't think through the power of attraction of certain colors, how strong they were. So something may be not heavily weighted with furniture on one side, but visually it's heavy on the other side because the of the weight of that particular material. Now again, you've got brick. So in thinking that through, unless they choose to paint it all out, and since she is trying to restore this in the buildings on the historic register, I would not paint out the brick. Um, also, it is um, important to, um, when you are putting this together, um, to keep in mind about the sample key, be sure that you indicate the quantity. I found that students didn't put that category and in some of your sample sheets, it doesn't show that. But if you did a window treatment and you simply put a price, but you don't tell how many window coverings you're, clo you're gonna do, your price won't add up. Also, have your students total the numbers. They didn't do that in the past. One last thing I want to share with you, there is a wonderful material called Yes Paste, and it does not bubble your samples. It don't use Elmer's glue, but the Yes Paste will give a smooth um, background. You can also use a spray adhesive, but um, the fixative is very, very strong. Remember also, when you're thinking about your designer, your, your artist's rooms, 
You're going to have some odors from the clay, from, um, from the um, glazes, and so you want to keep those, um, keep those addressed. Another hint is if any of your samples have marks on them, such as uh, the laminate will tell the colors, yes, you can wake it, take it off with an electric razor sometimes, but a better choice is to use acetone nail polish remover. It'll take off all the markings of what is on your samples. The last thing that I want to show you about your um, samples is be sure, now this will not be anything like what your students would use. However, what I find is that when students are using a pattern and it has a big pattern, when they cut the pattern for the sample, they cut it inappropriately. So in cutting this, you have an opportunity to cut here and simply show an entire flower and it gives you the feeling that this is a very traditional piece of, of fabric. Um, your artists may mix some traditional elements, but primarily they will be architectural elements. I hope that gave you some help. Um, I do believe that this is a good project, a challenging project, uh, that could be done very, very well if your students spend some time in doing some architectural research, if they do some research on pottery, and that they make sure that they are allowing clearances for means of egress. Thank you very much, and if you run into major difficulties, my number's in the phone book, Pat Hennings. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Pat. We You're really welcome. appreciate all the valuable information you have brought in this as a certificate of appreciation from thank the Home you. Economics Careers and Technology Education. Thank you. And thank you all for being here today. I know it hasn't been easy. I apologize for the mix up with the link. I will be sending you a link to the recording uh, and you'll be able to show that to your students and also to refer to it in the future. Thank you very much. Goodbye.